whenever you guys are ready. Imagine living a life where your parents barely even acknowledge your existence. Meet Sophie. Sadly, this is re the reality that Sophie faced on a daily basis. This leads us into the epidemic issue of child abuse that affects many children daily. Hi, my name is Sarah Cruz, and we are going to be discussing the issue of child abuse. The Center of Disease Control defines child abuse as mistreatment of someone under the age of 18 by a parent, guardian, or anyone else playing a custodial role. There are four types of child abuse, including physical, emotional, sexual, and neglect. Maltreatment harms the child's social, psychological, and emotional state and can have, complete, can have detrimental effects for lasting years. Culture also influences the severity of the child abuse and the way we want society to use it. Child abuse creates economic and ethical problems in society and can harm the child. We chose to research the question, in the future, what prevention efforts can be put into effect in order to reduce the issue of child abuse and maltreatment. There are several different perspectives towards this issue, including ethical, economical, scientific, and cultural and social. Hi, my name is Jenna Davis, and today I'm going to be talking to you about the ethical issues of child abuse. Child abuse presents many different, different ethical issues depending on whether it's to the child, the parent, or even social care workers who are working to um, help the victims. Parents and child rights are, are part of ethical, the ethical issues. Parents have the, right, uh, have the right to privacy and children have the rights where if they release information to doctors or social care workers, do the social care workers need to, or do they get to tell the parents, do the parents deserve to know, things like that. Um, questions such as, should, these questions such as, should the information be released to parents, and what are the comfort levels and limits of an abused child, alluded to uncertain, uncertain circumstances that could lead to other ethical issues. Another ethical issue is the failure to become involved, which you can see in a story in 2008 where two, two 18-month-old twins were down by their 11-year-old sister over a week after their death weighing only four kilograms. Um, people, neighbors, would get siblings of these children coming up to their house naked and starving, but these neighbors decided that they didn't want to become involved and didn't speak up. So this story shows how people don't are scared to tell people just in case things like they're just scared that something will come back on them if they tell them. So, during my research, I found a solution that improves the ethicalities and um, tries to decline the overall issue of job abuse. Parenting skill and family relationship approaches are programs that are introduced by the National Center for Injury Prevention and Control that help support um, parents and guardians and help with their behavior management, parenting skills, and build safe and secure families for children. Um, the pros of this solution are that it promotes positive interaction, hazard recognition in the home, and responding to signs of illness and injury. Um, a con of this solution is that it's optional, which means that some parents could decide not to go to these programs or just not to listen at all. Along with many ethical issues of child abuse come cultural and social issues as well. Hi, my name is Ashton Trotter, and I'm here to present to you the cultural and social issues regarding child abuse. Child abuse is a prevalent issue that has affected the lives of countless individuals for decades. According to an article published by the University of North Carolina at Chapel Hill, the ways in which child abuse is defined varies globally. For instance, in the United States, spanking is becoming a less form, common form of punishment, while in India, common forms of punishment often include physical actions. These physical actions may be different to the extent, however, the ways that it affects the victims is quite similar. The UN Independent states that victims are more likely to become future abusers in the future due to the um, abuse. Child abuse can be presented in an ongoing cycle if preventative measures are not taken to reduce the amount of child abuse. While I was researching the cultural and social issues of child abuse, I came across a potential solution to reduce the amount of child abuse at a cultural level. Shanti Rahman and Deborah Hodes, a pediatrician and a professor, state that the first step into decreasing the amount of child abuse at a cultural level is to creating a better understanding between the relationship of culture and maltreatment. Although this solution, there is no way to completely enforce the solution, 
by creating a better understanding between their relationship, there would be better solutions implemented to create a better way to decrease the child abuse at particular cultures. Hi, my name is Blaine Powell. I'm going to be looking at the issue of child abuse from an economical perspective. The amount of money spent on child abuse is monumental and growing every year. We learned that child abuse is more common in poverty families, which makes it even more, even worse for the families. Through research, we found that a lifetime financial consequence of child abuse is around $200,000. This includes therapy and medical costs, but it doesn't account for the mental instability that could result in the unintended life. Children who are abused are more likely to grow up with financial downfalls. This could also be a result of poor backgrounds as a child is more likely to be from a poor background. Medical costs are a landmark for the financial connections of physical child abuse. Medical bills are not cheap, and the financial downfall applied to the families who suffer from child abuse can be devastating. Through the scientific lens, I came to the conclusion that child abuse has impacted scientific development and created psychological issues in children. In this diagram, there's two three-year-old three -year children, one who's normal and one who's been extremely neglected. As you can tell, the one who's been extremely neglected has a distinct um, brain development than the one who is normal. Um, Center of Disease Control says, genetics predispose us to develop in certain ways, but our experiences, including our interactions with other people, have a significant impact on how our predispos predispositions are expressed. Just as positive interactions can promote healthy brain development, negative interactions are commonly correlated with harmful brain development. Maltreatment causes children to become excessively alert for danger and often become unaccepting towards kindness and nurturing due to psychological issues that have came up. Psychological issues can affect the victim for the rest of their life, often leading into the adult years. The Center of Disease Control says as many as 80% of young adults who have been abused met the diagnostic criteria for at least one psychiatric disorder by the age of 21. Since it is common for those who have been abused to grow up to become abusers, the University of Chicago performed a research study to figure out why some do and others do not. They found that when young monkeys experience high amounts of neglect from their mothers in their first month of living, their brains produce less serotonin. Serotonin is a neurotransmitter in the brain, and low levels of serotonin are commonly correlated with depression, stress, and anxiety. This research shows that a solution for those who have been abused can be treated with a medicine to increase serotonin, and that would hopefully prevent them from becoming abusers in the future, and also decrease the rates of child abuse overall. A pro of this solution is that it's easy for the victim to handle, since they would only be having to take um, medicine on a regular basis to handle their psychological issues. Although this may seem like a simple fix, there are cons to the solution, including the expenses. Medicine is already very expensive, but it would also take a lot of money and time to uh, acquire the necessary research for scientists to make sure that the medicine will be safe for humans and that it would be effective in preventing child abuse. The science of child abuse shows that the effects on the brain and their mental state are, are severe and they need to be resolved. The final solution that we came to an agreement on as a group was presented by the Center of Disease Control and Prevention, and they state that changing the social norms to allow indifference to violence can create a better understanding of child abuse and highlight the bigger problem. The Breaking the Cycle campaign proved this solution to be true. They, it changed the, parents emotional, changed the parents' view on emotional abuse, as well as changing their exposure to conflict within their household. A post-campaign survey was taken, and after the survey, 44% of parents contemplated changing their behavior due to the increased awareness of child abuse, and 16% tried to stop yelling at, cursing at, or putting their child down. Although there are quite obvious implications that this solution cannot be enforced at a, at a social level, um, we chose this solution to be our final one due to the evidence to prove the solution effective. Children shouldn't have to live their life in fear of being abused. They need to be able to enjoy childhood and all the things that childhood brings. So in order for this to happen, people need to seek preventative methods in order to save the lives of millions of children worldwide.
a couple of questions here. All right, uh, Jenna, describe how the content of the team presentation changed as a result of group discussion. Um, we kind of like started off with like, when we all had to like come up with our topic, we had like, we didn't really know what kind of, um, we didn't really know what lenses that we wanted to do. And when we finally came up with our lenses, um, can you repeat the question? Sure. Describe how the content of the team presentation was changed as a result of group discussion. So we went to put everything into our slides. Um, some things, um, like with mine, some things I had to take out, like, um, like when I like I had other um, ethical issues and like when I talked about in my paper how like different ways that child abuse can be um, like recognized and that played in with how people could um, how they needed to become involved they could recognize it easier and maybe that would help people like to like want to become involved if they knew more about it and we couldn't really put that in our paper. And Ashlyn, I know, had cultural and social, and I know some stuff she couldn't, we decided that we didn't need in the presentation because it didn't really contribute to the overall solution that we had, and, or that we came up with when we like put the presentation together, and we decided the solution that we needed. So that's, that's it. Ah, uh, Sarah. Reflecting on your colleagues' work, which one had the greatest impact on your overall understanding of the problem that your group identified? Um, I think that Blaine's perspective, the economical perspective, had the greatest, it made me understand the issue better because it, his perspective showed that the children that were abused often came from families who had financial inst instability in their homes and that made provided a greater understanding of why child abuse was happening and why the issue is so great. And um, it showed that the ch it provided a reason for why child abuse happens and it backed up our evidence. Okay, thank you. Um, Blaine, having finished your project, what, if anything, do you consider to be a gap in your team's research that, if addressed, would make you feel more confident about your conclusion? I, wish we, I really wish we could add a couple more lenses because I feel like we had a limited space to talk about. I wish we had, I mean, I wish we had um, more lenses per person, not necessarily more people, because I, we could expand on that topic way more than we did. All right. And Ashlyn, um, in what way did you improve your ability to work with a group as a result of the project? Um, we had to find time to meet outside of school to present, and during, like, as we put the presentation together, um, each lens in and of itself was very important. However, our overall solution didn't specifically tie with Sarah's scientific lens because we believe that there was no, well, we found that there was no way to incorporate hers into a final solution that related to everyone's. So in instances like that, we had to take out some of our paper and use others more than like certain ones, so we just kind of had to evenly space out the amount of information presented and um, give everyone an equal opportunity to speak. All right, thank you.